So I've got some news, the biggest really, uh, that I've ever delivered on this channel. After seven years, almost seven years, of working towards this very singular goal, I have finally done it. I have secured a national training number in neurosurgery. One of the things I'm most proud of with this channel is that I've always tried to keep it real. Right from the start, it's been about showing this journey through medicine, the wins, the losses, everything that comes in between. And last year, that was a loss. That was a big loss. And I didn't get into neurosurgery training, despite doing one of the most competitive and prestigious junior clinical fellow programs in the country despite being surrounded by the incredible mentors and colleagues that I had and all the support I could have asked for, I fell short and that hit really hard. But this year in 2025, things are different. I got in, I secured a national training number in neurosurgery after years of exams, audits, presentations, research, night shifts, interviews. It's finally now happening. It means that I'm starting on an eight year run through training program this summer. It means stability and employment for a long time. It means career progression towards becoming a consultant. But most of all, the top level headline, it means that I'm gonna be a neurosurgeon. And as if that wasn't enough, there's a, there's a twist on top. I've also been awarded an academic clinical fellowship, an ACF, based at the University of Plymouth. And this will get its own video, but in short, this is one of the most competitive academic training positions you can get as a resident doctor. It means that during my ST1 to 3 years, 25% of my time will be protected for academic research. I'll have some funding towards a master's degree, structured support to apply for a PhD when the time comes. And there are around 250 or so ACFs every year distributed across all of the different specialties in the UK. So to be awarded one on top of uh, neurosurgical training, it's, it's a pretty big deal. And the enormity of that hasn't quite sunk in yet. Now, if you're watching this thinking, well, how do you even get into neurosurgery? That sounds cool. I, I might want to do that. The answer is it's hard. It's really, really hard. Each year, there are around 24 posts available for the entire UK. That's all of England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and that includes the ACFs too. Every year, around three to 400 people apply for those spots. This year it was closer to 600 by all accounts, and you go through a very rigorous process that assesses everything from your clinical experience, your research, your publications, your audits, your presentations, your teaching, your psychomotor skills, all the rest of it. And that's just to get to interview. And then the interview itself is easily the hardest that I've done in my entire clinical career. It takes months, genuinely months of solid preparation just to be competitive, just to get to the stage where you are likely to be offered a job. And last year I ranked 32 in the UK, which is about the top 10%, but fundamentally that's not good enough to get a post. This year I bounced back. I looked at every part of my portfolio, improved what I could, pushed through some, some pretty severe personal and professional challenges. But in the end, I ranked seventh nationally this year. And that meant that I was offered my second choice of ST1 clinical posts in Southampton. And crucially, I proved to myself, therefore, that I was capable of getting into neurosurgery via the normal clinical route as well. I didn't need to rely on the ACF to get me in through a side door. I'd met the same clinical standards as everyone else has to. And th that's a pretty big deal. And I'll, I'll expand on that more in the ACF video. But I also want to say this, and this is really important, that there are amazing, truly inspirational people who didn't get in this year, just as there are every year. People that would make outstanding neurosurgeons, and if, God forbid, me or my family or someone else important to me needed neurosurgical care, I would be the first in line asking for those doctors to be looking after those people. But that's just the pretty grim reality of this process is that the vast majority of people who apply will not make it in mathematically in any given year. And the process becomes a war of attrition. If you are willing to keep showing up, keep improving, keep reapplying, eventually, hopefully, you might break through. But it's absolutely 
absolutely brutal and I genuinely believe that we need to rethink how this works. If we know that most applicants will not succeed, then as a system, I think that we have a responsibility to do more than just say, well, tough luck, try again next year. I think there has to be better feedback, better transparency, and a real sense of a duty of care to applicants because this process is so stressful. It is tiring, demoralizing, it's really psychologically intense. You're, you're putting essentially your life on hold for six months at a time. Um, again, just for the chance of a job and some progression. And if you don't get in, you've then got to psych yourself up to do it again and again and again. And if you applied for training this year in neurosurgery or in any other specialty and it didn't work out, then just please know that you're not alone. I see you, I was there, it was awful, but you, you pushed through it. Leave me a comment, send me a message via the website and I'll, I'll do my best to help you however I can or put you in touch with the people who can help. So yes, it's been a very long road thus far, one that I feel has been worth taking, and a new road that I'm excited to start traversing. So thank you all for being part of this journey so far. I'm beyond excited for what's coming next, and as ever, you are more than welcome to come along for the ride. So thank you for being here, and I'm very grateful for all of the support that I continue to get, despite not posting as much as I should. So thank you very much, take care, and I'll see you soon.